And now we are moving forward for the very first panel of the day, which is going to be very informative, very knowledgeable. I would request all of you to be settled and give your full attention towards the main stage we have. So we're going to start. As I take your name, you are very much requested to make your way towards the stage so that we can start with the panel. The first and foremost is a person who is a highly skilled senior rail executive with a remarkable 36 years of track record in the rail industry. With experience in running business units and delivering major international projects worth rupees AUT $4 billion, he excels in creating opportunities and leading multidisciplinary teams. He has held several board positions and possesses diverse business experience in project management, operations, sales and commercial management across the UK, Europe, Asia, Asia and Australia. He has, he has an exp uh, exp impressive educational background consisting of an MBA, CMS and HND in engineering. His career achievements include uh, successfully supporting the Melbourne high capacity metro train project strengthening Bombardier reputation in Australia, delivering the QNGR PPP project and completing the SSL project for London Underground on time. He is none other than Mr. Paul Brown, Executive Director Rail 2XM Consultant. Can we have you here on the stage, sir, with a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, can I request Mr. Narendra Shah to kindly welcome the guest with a flower bouquet? So. A formal welcome with fresh bouquet of flowers to support. Thank you, thank you for being here. Please be seated. Next up, we have a person who is a highly accomplished professional with an impressive background. He has uh, his honored with FICE, MASCE, Fellow and Royal Chartered Engineer, IEE, and is a part of prestigious Indian Railway Service of Engineers. He graduated from the internationally acclaimed IIT Roorkee in civil engineering and pursued MTech at IIT Delhi. With an MBA from IMT Ghaziabad and uh, acclaimed PNP USA certification, he possesses expertise when it comes to project management. He is an alumni of Harvard University for strategic uh, leadership in C Singapore, Singapore, ICLIFF, Kalampur, and ISB Hyderabad. He has made significant contributions as ADRM Infrastructure Lucknow, leading 25,000 technical staff and achieving division number one status in India for mobility improvement and throughout the enhancement. He has successfully executed and delivered the challenging projects which, such as uh, gauge conversion, track modernization and remodeling of major yards. He is Mr. Kazi Mehraz Ahmed, Chief Engineer Track Modernization, Northern Railway. Everybody, please put your hands together as he makes his way. I request Mr. Shah to welcome him as well with a bouquet of flowers. Very glad to have you. Thank you so much for giving your precious time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next up, we're going to have a person who is a recognized rolling stock professional having extensive experience in the design, manufacturing, operations and maintenance over large railway network. He has proven track record in leading sizable cross-functional team for operations, manufacturing, and project, project execution. He is a business strategist, having traveled worldwide and have done extensive advanced strategic management courses from leading universities when it comes to USA. A graduate in mechanical engineering with over three decades of experience in ra Indian railways, he managed several modernization projects, new design passenger train coaches, and local driving simulators. He is currently impaneled as arbitrator in Indian Railway and also 
working as railway consultant. He is Sri A.K. Singh, railway project and rolling stock expert, Indian Railways. Everybody, please put your hands together as he makes his way. Shall I request Mr. Shah to welcome him as well with the bouquet of flowers? Thank you. Thank you so much. Now we're going to have a person who is uh, the vice president at Envision Enterprises Solutions. By profession, he holds a Bachelor of Engineering degree and MBA in Marketing Management. With over 25 years of vast experience in sales and marketing, uh, marketing of IT solutions to large corporate customers. A team player with leadership qualities in conceptualizing and winning customers acceptance. He was involved in signing large prestigious contracts when it and dominated in providing asset management and customer solutions to several metro rail and port customers in India and abroad. I'm talking about Mr. R. Ramana, Vice President at Envision Enterprises Solution. Everybody, please put your hands together for Mr. R. Ramana. Can I request Mr. Shah to welcome uh, Mr. Ramana with a bouquet of flowers? Thank you. Now is the time when we're going to call the moderator for this entire panel. He is uh, an accomplished expert in world heritage, environment, tourism, culture, museum, conservation, sustainable development, stakeholder frameworks, and community recognized by UNESCO ICONOS. With a rich career in the Indian railway system, he has held prestigious positions such as a general manager, modern coach factory, member rolling stock and ex-officio secretary to government of India. Chief mechanical engineer, West Central Railway and director National Rail Museum. He's a mechanical engineer with a B.Tech mechanical engineering from IIT Bombay and has received numerous awards including gold medals and has contributed to the railway sector both in India and internationally as a director, consultant and expert. His expertise and experience have played a vital role in the advancement of railway industry and heritage preservation. He is Sri Rajesh Agarwal, consultant, former member, Rolling Stock. Can we have you here, sir? So he's going to moderate this entire panel. And I am uh, guaranteeing you that this entire panel is going to bring you a lot of information, a lot of knowledge, provided you give your full attention towards the stage. Looking forward to have a great, great panel ahead. Can we have the book of flowers, please? He is Sri Rajesh Agarwal. So. so can I request all of you to give all the speakers and moderator a huge round of applause before we start the panel. Yes. So the mic is over to Sri Rajesh Agarwal. Uh, thank you very much and uh, congratulate uh, the team of InnoMetro to put this panel together. I think we are going to have a lot of information and a lot of useful information. As you know that uh, the 19th century was a century of uh, science, the 20th century was century of engineering, the 21st century began with a century of technology. It's now technology, technology, and technology. So this is what this session is all about. And together with technology, when we started the 21st century, we started with the Y2K revolution. And then the computers have really advanced. We have IOTs, we have artificial intelligence, we have machine learning, and it is data, data, and data. So it's become a century of technology, analytics, data, and uh, there was a Moore's law which said that, you know, in 18 months, we increase double or whatever. 
but uh, that is getting compressed and compressed and compressed, just like the chip is becoming smaller and smaller, smaller than the size of a hair today. So we have a very exciting panel, and uh, I think we'd like to hear from them how exactly technology can be leveraged in the Indian Railways. I would like to just inform the audience that uh, technology came into the Indian Railways in a very, very big way uh, around 2018. We had the LHP coaches introduced about 25 years before that, but still not introduced on the Indian Railways. The Vande Bharat had not come. Our manufacturing was still primitive. <clears throat> and a number of infrastructure advancements in sensorizations and IOTs had yet not begun. A huge revolution of sorts took place in 2018. We had 100% conversion to the LHP class coaches. We introduced the train 18. We introduced the smart coach. We introduced track monitoring systems, wayside monitoring systems, smart yards, smart depots. And uh, much of it, of course, took a backseat during the corona crisis. But I'm glad to hear that it is bouncing back. So, fellow industrialists, uh, partners here, I'm sure you've got a lot of opportunity ahead with perhaps thousands of crores today available for technology inputs. So, without further ado, let me begin from the other side. Uh, so, we have Mr. Paul Brown. And uh, I'm really glad that you're here, Mr. Brown. You have a fantastic experience worldwide. And uh, you know what the Indian ecosystem is. You are already owning a project on the Delhi Metro for the complete management of the new RS1 project. So can you give us a global perspective and how we need to do this digital management of the assets and the maintenance? And the, can you give us a global perspective so that uh, you know we can really upscale the input? Okay, thank you for the for the introduction, and it's uh, it's a, certainly a pleasure to be here. Um, you ra you raised some very interesting points, and it's uh, a, a quite a, a relevant topic that, that we are here to discuss today. Um, and, and maybe just to start with the, some of the global context around that, um, we've seen over the last 10, 15 years huge uh, expenditure and. Uh, development by governments, uh, ministries, and, uh, and urban uh, areas globally. Uh, heavy investment in, in infrastructure, uh, which has resulted in huge projects in, in the transportation and rail sector. Um, but we're starting to see a shift now where, you, you know, to, to coin the phrase, the, the, the chickens are coming home to roost, and, and these governments uh, and urban areas don't have as much money um, and now need to, to make these assets that they've, they've bought work a lot harder, um, which in the context of the rail industry means we need to get more out of the asset management. Uh, we need to be a lot smarter in what we do uh, and we need to reduce cost. And in the context of uh, technology and data, um, there are certainly uh, huge advancements there that, that can help us. Um, traditional approach to asset management uh, has been very dependent on uh, estimation, uh, time-based, or, or condition-based. And uh, th this results in a huge cost to traditional operators in, in labor, um, and dare I say, huge expenditure uh, with OEMs for spare parts where we're, we've been replacing uh, parts that probably don't need to be replaced um, just because that's what we've always done. So if we move to uh, the technological development around asset management, uh, condition-based monitoring, remote uh, condition-based uh, assessment, 
Uh, there's been huge advancements in that field in the last uh, less decade, um, and I think it's becoming more refined as we uh, as we move forward. I, I can talk of my first experience of that was with London Underground, where uh, the subsurface fleet that we introduced uh, had uh, remote monitoring on that train. There was wayside uh, uh, data collection. Every time the train went through the middle of London, it, it would ping and send a huge amount of data back to the depot. The problem was we weren't really sure what to do with all that data. Um, that, that, but that was 10, 15 years ago. Where we are today, it's, it's very, uh, very structured. Um, and this analysis and use of this data um, can help drive improvements in safety. We're, we're not having to utilize manpower as much in, in depot uh, difficult environments. So we get a safety improvement. Um, we get an operational efficiency improvement. So we're not tying up assets, manpower, labor, resource on uh, non-needed maintenance activities. It improves our availability of our fleets. Uh, and probably most importantly, it drives reduction in, uh, in the cost of the overall life cycle and maintenance of that asset. Um, huge amounts of things that can be done with remote-based monitoring, whether that be uh, temperature checking, cycle counting, uh, understanding how many passengers are on the train, uh, weather condition. So, uh, you know, I'm currently in Australia uh, and and similar to India, we have some extreme weather conditions there. Um, but understanding that before, that you're in a, a flood situation, you can make, uh, make decisions operationally around what you do with your fleet. So yeah, I think there are uh, huge advancements in this field. Um, it's certainly changing the game in terms of asset management, which we need to. Um, we can't afford the uh, traditional approach of lots of people at depots, huge amounts of spend on uh, OEM spare parts and materials, uh, and we have to get a lot smarter in how we uh, adapt and, and carry out our maintenance operation. Well, so that was very useful insight, you know. I think uh, you have emphasized that we have spent a lot on the assets. Now we want to make them work harder. So it's really an eye-opener how to get more from your assets. And uh, I can give you an example, like uh, when I was in the modern coach factory, we had a factory which was claimed to have been doing only 500 coaches maximum. But by using our assets better, we could increase the capacity to 5,000 coaches. So it was almost a 10x improvement. I think uh, what uh, Mr. Brown has emphasized is going to be vitally important. I'm sure you deal with both fixed assets and the rolling stock assets. So we definitely, I'm sure you'll be sharing with the audience a lot more inputs on you know, how to use your... Another very vital aspect he has touched upon is predictive maintenance, condition monitoring. Why go for preventive maintenance? Why maintain the assets all the time? You maintain it only when it's required. So predictive maintenance, condition monitoring, even remote monitoring, so you know all the time what exactly is happening. So you have the pulse, you have the ECG, you have all the data coming in, and you know whether anything is going wrong. So that's going to be vitally important. <clears throat> I think uh, gradually all your data, now you know what to do with the data. I'm sure you're using machine learning and artificial intelligence, and uh, perhaps even chat GPT, I don't know. So that's the way forward. I am sure some of us will definitely get familiar. So in order to use our assets better, I'd like to come to Mr. A.K. Singh. I think you have actually done a lot of work in this direction. How to get more from manufacturing. We in Indian Railways in 2018, when we went into a technology revolution, we celebrated the National Technology Day. We brought in Industry 4.0, where it was considered unthinkable in India. And we were amongst the first in the country to bring Industry 4.0. And now, of course, it has proliferated. 
So Mr. A.K. Singh is also an expert in that. And uh, you have actually accomplished that in many respects. Uh, tell us how to, in our manufacturing, in our rolling stock industry, and also cover inside the coach. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, for uh, manufacturing, the industry 4.0, uh, some efforts were made. And uh, in uh, MCF, as well as new workshops, uh, especially in uh, uh, integrated manufacturing area like a uh, wheel shop where all the machines were in one place. There the uh, machines were interconnected, digitized, where the data were coming from one machine to another machine where uh, there was a series of machines. So that really not only uh, reduced the um, manufacturing time, but also it uh, improved the reliability part and the data integrity, for example, the uh, wheel and Excel and turning and assembly. This requires a lot of uh, uh, very uh, critical data uh, to, to have uh, reliability in the wheel pressing. So that shop, uh, this digitization was uh, using the industry 4.0 norm. It was uh, used. But uh, I will say the asset uh, management side, uh, I think the major work is in the now in the in the operation in the open line in open line uh, especially in indian railways kind of network where we have a large number of fleet and uh, a large number of uh, depots <coughs> and there we have to uh, deploy a lot of manpower the manpower is deployed only for detecting where is the fault it is not for rectification, for actual repair work. The major portion of my labor deployment, technical staff deployment is just for detecting. A train of 20 coaches coming to the depot, it has to go back for service in a safe condition. How to find out where is the fault? So the first thing is, uh, is detection of the fault. Now, how a fault can be detected on its own? how we get alerts in advance. A good work has been done now using OMRS, where we have a um, wheel detection system for bearing failure and for uh, uh, any uh, undue impact on the due to wheel, wheel condition. That gets detected. We have got around uh, 25 uh, such uh, online uh, real-time rolling stock monitoring systems where Huge data is now coming to the uh, centralized server in the CRIS, uh, and this data is being analyzed. Now you will know not only the alerts, if there is, there is a, any unsafe condition in a running train, but also you get an advanced intimation when this bearing is going to fail. The, now, th uh, this, this can be further enhanced by putting uh, under gear uh, kind of uh, video scanning system where we, ca we can capture the profile of the wheels, any failure of the springs, any failure of the under gear, product, uh, under gear items. And uh, uh, the Chris is already working on that uh, the, through Relayboard and uh, the system uh, they are going to design for scanning. Uh, similar systems in a scattered way or already designed uh, by the Konkan Railway and uh, about seven, eight systems are working where they capture the temperature of the wheel, uh, brake system problems, bearing failure and uh, visual uh, pictures to assist the maintenance team. So the challenge today is that such a large fleet of rolling stock running 24 hours, trains coming in the midnight at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. The maintenance staff has to work in the midnight, that too in a very uh, adverse weather conditions. And uh, uh, there is a possibility of uh, anything missing in detection. These uh, digitized automatic scanning and detection system, which are supported by artificial intelligence, uh, which uh, which which has which is uses the uh, we call uh, machine learning concept a deep learning concept to analyze the data captured and predict 
when this component is likely to fail in fact this kind of arrangement is going to really uh, help uh, railways in a big way in the in the uh, coming time and uh, already the a lot of work has been done so this uh, uh, another thing is uh, this on board diagnostic uh, which uh, uh, rajesh agrawal saab mentioned that on board diagnostic means uh, a smart coaches so if you have a smart coaches you get uh, online alerts you get uh, online uh, connective uh, information for immediate action so that uh, the trains run safely so uh, but online you cannot have uh, this kind of a smart system you cannot have on the wagons which are a, in a large quantity so for that most suitable system is on track uh, for real time monitoring system even this i am told this uh, rapid metro uh, rapid, rapid train for uh, delhi and uh, they also have uh, um, two hot box detectors and in the uh, developed uh, european railways uh, the on track systems they uh, like high speed uh, tgv they they scan the uh, bearing temperature uh, almost uh, every 25 30 km which comes around to 10 to 15 minutes every bearing gets scanned if there is any failure the uh, the the alert goes to the control room for switching off the oh so that kind of uh, the, the digitization and this ai is is really is going to be uh, really very helpful in the coming days and uh, indian railways uh, as i said a lot of work has been done now uh with uh, using this omrs but uh, a smart coach is the area which uh, which has yet to yet to come up i think uh, that uh, there uh, not much progress has been made and uh, but in coming times i think the the trial which has been done by the uh, few smart coaches and the trial by the uh, of the under gear uh, visual examination through this uh, cameras by the uh, konkan railway kind of uh, design product uh, that can really help us to take us forward but uh, asset management uh, railways have uh, are also using other than the maintenance for utilization purpose as you must have heard about the train profile now the train profile uh, with the train profile they can predict how where the uh, seats should be how seats will be utilized how waiting wait list time can be reduced and uh, now earlier they used to uh, have some quota uh, en route for the uh, for the train journey so the uh, last moment it was not uh, normally it is not known uh, which quota will be filled up which quota will will remain uh, unutilized with train profiling and artificial intelligence modeling they are able to uh, predict in advance and release the uh, berths which are uh, not to be uh, uh, not likely to be occupied and this has really optimized the uh, the utilization of the uh, the the trains in passenger passenger trains more than 200 trains have already been uh, uh, covered under this and more are being now covered under this scheme thank you thank you, thank you uh, mr singh i think you co co covered it quite comprehensively i was uh, had the privilege of pioneering industry 4.0 in 2018 and uh, in collaboration with the department of science and technology we released rolling stock 2.0 in 2019 unfortunately the whole thing has got a break you know because of the corona crisis etc but uh, none of the projects has died down so everything that mr singh has emphasized is still live there are thousands of crores and sanctions i think we need to bring them forward what he has said is you know like the internet of things the iot that has been now around for more than 20 years why is it that in india we are still a non starter or just about to start so i would like to request our august audience and everybody whatever we supply today in the 21st century has to be intelligent machines have to look after themselves machines have to be able to talk to machines whatever systems we provide those systems should be able to look after themselves like auto detection that he was emphasizing 
We don't need a person to go there and find out what, they, what is wrong. So the systems should look after themselves and the systems should be able to talk to other systems and be able to create synergy within the system. Now this applies not only to the under gear, <clears throat> the inside of the train, but also to things like passengers, as he's emphasized, you know, how many seats are booked, how many seats are not booked, how to book the other seats. In every area, we can, you know, bring this about. So I think uh, all these possibilities are there. And as far as this under gear is concerned, you know, safety is of paramount consideration. So I'm happy to say that way back in 2019, we pioneered a system where we will have a continuous online monitoring of the bearing. As you are aware, the bearing fails very suddenly. I mean, if we have fixed monitoring every 100 kilometers or 400 kilometers, it doesn't help because it might fail within 25 kilometers. So we have a continuous monitoring of the bearing. So we have a system already available which can monitor the bearing, which can monitor the wheel, which can monitor the suspension, and which can also monitor that track. And you can get a heat map along the way. And this through remote can be available to the depot. So it is high time that we brought this into position. Stalwarts like Mr. Singh have been, you know, doing tremendous work in this direction. And uh, I'm sure that uh, with all of you, we are going to, you know, take this to the next level. So I'd like to now come to the track. Mr. Kazi is here with us, so thank you for coming. And as you know that uh, he is an expert on uh, the infrastructure side, he is an expert on the track side, he is an expert on the fixed assets, which are also vitally important not only for the uh, functional management, but also for safety. And uh, he is part of Northern Railway, which is running all the Rajthanis, all the Shatabdis, and most of the Vande Bharats. So, thank you, Mr. Kazi, and please tell us how the track safety, the infrastructure safety, the bridge safety, how we can take it to the next level with digital intelligence. Hello. <clears throat> Sir, just to uh, compliment uh, your, uh, I mean, awesome coverage of the topic right from uh, across the spectrum. So as uh, I would like to put the context to today's discussion, uh, as you had said that uh, 19th century belonged to science and technology, I mean, I put it this way that 19th century belonged to uh, UK, uh, they ruled the world, 20th century belonged to USA, but uh, I mean, uh, we take pride that uh, uh, India is going to be the most evolved nation by 2047. So this the present, uh, uh, this not only, I mean, this is a rhetoric, but we have been the largest digital economy. Uh, we have successfully organized 220 crores of COVID vaccination during the COVID times. We are $3.5 billion economy and slated to be the third largest economy in the world. Uh, we have added 64,000 kilometers in last few Eight in eight nine years, and uh, our entrepreneurs, our um, industry leaders are leading the world business all over the world. So, with due humility, um, we we say that this is the perspective in which the artificial intelligence, the blockchain, uh, the Internet of the Things, the digital transformation, the art, the um, artificial intelligence that has to be brought into our different arena. As uh, you have, uh, I mean, it has been uh, quite rightly covered that right from the management of the uh, business of railways uh, to maintenance of the assets, uh, we come down to the track maintenance. In the track maintenance part of it, um, um, our preventive maintenance is the new in thing and SNCF in France, they have already launched um, for the F Paris area, the preventive maintenance which is AI based. And in India also we are making good strides. Firstly, the track monitoring and uh, 
uh, pred predictions that for the Delhi Bhopal route, uh, we have already um, uh, digital digitalized and uh, with the uh, experience of RLTS between Delhi Meerut and all, uh, this ha this is taking shape. Uh, first, in the case of track technology, firstly, I mean it is the um, track geometry which matters. It is the rail condition which matters and the fastenings. So based on the signals, large vast data of signals which are coming from these three interaction. Uh, the predictive maintenance, which is highly efficient, that is going to be introduced. Another uh, relevant area is bridge. I take pride uh, in saying that I have designed one E-Setu, uh, which encompasses the bridge fabrication process and, and I had put in artificial intelligence into it so that that can become uh, quite handy for all the workshops of Indian Railways as well as to the uh, workshops of the corporate houses because that also has to brought into the other spheres of our uh, manufacturing, fabrication, maintenance, as well as infrastructure building. So uh, the preventive maintenance, which is the end thing uh, that has to be brought into uh, all the aspects of track, of the OHE transmission traction, of the rolling stock, as well as in the other uh, infrastructure fields, and that is uh, taking shape in a big way. And uh, we are slated uh, for more efficient uh, days ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So I think uh, as far as the track is concerned, the bridge is concerned, the OHE is concerned, and we also have trespassing. So you know all these factors become so vitally important. And uh, you know, it's, you'll be happy to note that already the Northern Railway started the Delhi-Bhopal route. And this is going to cover the length and breadth of India. So <clears throat> I think uh, there is a lot of input that can come in over here. The, as you are aware that the government this year, the Indian Railways itself, is spending 2.4 lakh crores of rupees on infrastructure. And this infrastructure cannot be entirely dumb infrastructure. It will be intelligent infrastructure. So again, there is an opportunity there. So I would like to agree with him also entirely that uh, this century should belong to India. India, as you know, all the world is looking towards India. Our Indian Prime Minister is also now part of the G7. It's G7 plus India. So. It's going to be exciting days ahead for digital transformation as far as the infrastructure, track, bridges, OHE, and our trespassing issues are concerned. So let me come to you, Mr. Ramana. And uh, now that you've heard our asset management, you've heard regarding the rolling stock, you've heard regarding the infrastructure, uh, you've got your also experience worldwide. Where do you think we have lost? Where do you think we are missing anything here? Is there any, any gap left now? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Rajesh Agarwal, sir. In fact, uh, sitting in between the distinguished uh, and the panel speakers, my job has actually been reduced. Uh, looking at the entire spectrum of uh, the experience what uh, from your end from the railways and Mr. Paul Brown from the experience from the, from the metro and the railway segment, Mr. Gazizer and Mr. A.K. Singh. Uh, in fact, we, we are a mixture of all these things with our experience from Envision where we implement uh, mostly the asset management solutions. We comprehend and we, we mix all these things in providing a better solution. In fact, uh, we, as you rightly have touched upon the asset management and uh, the track, the depot, the under in the wheel and the undercarriage and all what Mr. Singh has covered. But uh, in the metro rail where we are implementing our software solutions, it is uh, we are touching upon all these things and we are also adding upon the the topic of the day, the AI and all. And the, today the day is all about the data. How we you consume the data? There's a lot of data which is in the market. 
from various equipments which are tech technology driven. The data we are now using it very intelligently by putting up uh, various uh, tools, advanced tools and including the AI and the ML in trying to see that how we can prescribe doing a prescriptive analysis in future so that we are trying to track the failures of today and predict for the future. That way we wanted to reduce the overall OPEX. The CAPEX is already done. Now we are talking about more in reducing the OPEX so that we try to be have a more reliable and a safe system so that the journey of the customers have a pleasant experience. Today the customers who spend money are all looking for a good experience where they have without a tireless journey. So all these technologies are actually adding to the customer's experience only we are we're all thriving for that. In fact, uh, in fact I am very, very uh, uh, blessed to be next to you and <laughs> answering that. And uh, in the metro rail where we're implementing in India and outside India, I'll just step on one more minute, uh, where in majority of uh, all the subsystems which have been integrated to the software solution, has got all these features which have been embedded so that uh, the metro rail owners and operators are able to see the benefit on the operation maintenance and the reliability of it, which is the talk of the day. Thank you, sir. Thank you. No, I think you've uh, very widely touched upon the, you know, comprehensive portfolio that you're providing to reduce the operating expenditure. And as Mr. Brown earlier said that we, we make our assets work harder. We make them work harder. At the same time, we reduce the operating expenditure. So we get the best of, you know, both double wham. That's really very encouraging. Uh, coming back to you, Mr. Brown, let me say that, uh, you know, today we are concentrating too much on IoT, too much on intelligence, too much on chips, too much on computers. But as far as rolling stock, as far as the rail industry is concerned, we are still, you know, because it's all about steel, we are suffering very heavy due to corrosion. We are suffering very heavy because it's very heavy. We are suffering because uh, it's difficult to fabricate. We are suffering because it has a limited life. We are suffering because it's not so aesthetic. Now, new materials are being coming in, and Tata's, as I'm also a part of Tata's, is pioneering new materials. How do you think we should now switch over to new materials to also reduce our operating expenditure, to also make our assets work harder, and to also reduce our failures? While we have a system that can fail, but then to prevent it from failing, we can also change the materials. So why is it that we are very slow in switching to new materials? It's a, it's, a, it's a good question uh, and some valid points raised there. Um, I mean, one of the things about the railway industry is we love tradition. And uh, at times that prevents a little bit of innovation. Um, and we tend to stick with what we know. Uh, but your point is valid. There's been huge advances in uh, composite materials uh, and different structures. Um, and I think we are seeing uh, more use of them uh, in components. Uh, the, the previous presentation around uh, interiors, uh, seat components, um, and a number of those uh, other areas of, of rolling stock manufacture. So I think it's already there. Um, it just needs to be adopted a little bit more. Um, linking it to the asset management and uh, the, the operational performance is uh, it's how do you repair it? Uh, you know, we, we have a habit of uh, damaging rolling stock and, and, and our assets and you need to be able to replace it quickly. Um, so some of the cab front design in the early days with uh, when we switched to GRP type uh, solution uh, aesthetically was very good but was terribly difficult in a depot or environment to uh, repair or replace. Um, I think we can learn a lot from the aircraft industry. Um, they've made again huge advances in the use of uh, composite and, and alternative material. 
Um, you referred to steel. I mean, uh, there's always a, in my experience, there's been a, a challenge of what is the best material to build rolling stock out of? Is it, is it steel? Is it stainless steel? Aluminium? Um, are we ready to take the next step to have a fully composite uh, car body? Uh, I, I'm not so sure um, for a number of the reasons we mentioned. But I, I would say the industry is adapting uh, composite material. Um, uh, and, you know, we, we need to push those boundaries. But linking it back to uh, how efficient, how economic, uh, and how sustainable is it? course. So thank you, Mr. Brown. So I think I'll sum up. So as far as the rolling stock ecosystem is concerned, the rail industry ecosystem is concerned, we have the design stage, we have the production, we have the rolling stock, we have the track side infrastructure, and then we have the complete life cycle management of the entire. Now all this is becoming intelligent. We have systems talking to each other, whether it be it in design, be it in production, be it in rolling stock, be it in trackside infrastructure, be it in life cycle management. So we have this panel very comprehensively telling about the entire ecosystem, how the entire thing can become intelligent. And as I told you, we already released the rolling stock 2.0 in 2019, which now needs to be taken to the next level, for which the budgets are also there with the railway ministry, and the projects are also very much there. So I think uh, there are exciting days ahead. Before we end, can we have a question or two? So, yes, uh, Mr. Suri, uh, one of these the hand mic, please? stalwarts of the rail industry, sir, I think you spent more than 50 years in the rail industry. So we have 50 years of experience. Uh, please tell us how we go for the next 50 years, 2047, uh, the era of India. I would slightly supplement what Mr. A.K. Singh has said. I think we are moving in the right direction and we are moving at a good speed. We installed OMRS, Online Maintenance of Rolling Stock, for those who are not aware, at 25 locations in the country. And these 25 systems have been working very efficiently. And this was done by Track IQ, and now Indian Railways have placed an order for 95 more systems on WebTech. And these would be installed within the next one year. So all over the country, you would have the OMR systems and our 11,000 locals, 70,000 coaches, and 3 lakh wagons will be running 24 hours a day from Kashmir to Kanyakumari. And these systems will be taking care of uh, identifying the defects. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for this information. I think A.K. Singh, uh, you can endorse that. And uh, who exactly is implementing uh, uh, from the railway side? I mean, Vaptec is the technology partner. But uh, who's uh, doing the contract from the Indian Railways? It was for a centralized contract for all the... Uh, so this was by Kofmo earlier, but Kofmo doesn't exist. Uh, so if somebody wants to talk to the Indian Railways, who do they talk to? So, you are right, sir. This is uh, uh, now being uh, further expanded across uh, all our Indian railways. And the, here the running train, the uh, identification of coach or uh, wagon is uh, uh, done by the, uh, through a, uh, by capturing the uh, coach number uh, uh, because there was no RFID earlier. It's short of time, so let's... Now, uh, RFID is time. being also done uh, on all the rolling stock. That will help uh, this data capturing without any error. <coughs> uh, yes, uh, Mr. Ashish uh, Arora, you have a question. Uh, yes, so currently Hitachi is working on it, uh, on onboard condition monitoring system, and we have the wireless sensors installed on the Excel boxes to monitor the condition of track, condition of wheels, condition of bearing and even ride quality, person sitting inside and having some bumps around the LHB coaches. So we, we ran a uh, test for 100 coaches and it is quite uh, workable situ in the Indian conditions. And uh, the feedback from the railways 
uh, amazing. They are so satisfied. We've you got your question. Yeah. So I think Hitachi already has the solution, Mr. Kazi, for your track monitoring and your predictive maintenance of the track. What he's suggesting is that he can give you a heat map of the track after yes. the Vande Bharat has crossed the track. Right. So like if it's going from Delhi to Bhopal, he'll give you a complete heat map of your track to Bhopal as the train has gone to Bhopal. So that yeah, might be useful for you. Correct, Rajesh T. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this is how uh, the big data analytics that, and, uh, that comes into picture. That as we run the first train, and as we run several trains, a lot of signals, acoustic signals, as well as those generated through um, actual running of the train, they keep on getting accrued. And with that anal analysis, uh, the level at which the track or various components of the track or for that matter other uh, components of the rolling stock, how they are maintained, our uh, signature is getting developed. And based on that uh, data which is coming for the entire track, the signature is recorded. In case any abrupt change in that signature comes, that is immediately known and that signal goes immediately for attending that emergency. Besides that, uh, over the period of time, the gradual uh, regression, the gradual uh, degradation which is coming over, that is also with the help of artificial intelligence that is projected. And when a certain level and certain modicum of uh, maintenance is required, that is already told by um, the um, artificial intelligence and that takes into picture to optimize the complete maintenance practice. And that will I be think, going to uh, we Thank should you. now end the session. Uh, yes, uh, we, we can have a one-to-one one conversation we after we are off so stage. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So you all can raise as uh, we all uh, should give a round of applause to all the gentlemen we have on the stage right now. What a session to recall. So as I take your name, you are requested to kindly come up on the stage to felicitate all the speakers. We're going to start with uh, Mr. Mohan Sundaram. Can we have you here on the stage, sir, please? Uh, to felicitate, to present a token of gratitude to Mr. Paul Brown. Uh, can you all please raise and come forward? Yeah? So to felicitate uh, Mr. Paul Brown, we have uh, Mr. Mohan Sundaram. Can we have the memento, please? Thank you. Thank you so much. Big hand, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Can we also have the presence of Mr. Kojagiri More here on the stage? Mr. Kojagiri More. To Fell State, uh, Mr. Kazi Mehraj Ahmed. Are you Kojagiri? Oh. Ms. Kojagiri More. To Fell State, Mr. Kazi Mehraj Ahmed. A big hand, ladies and gentlemen, for Mr. Kazi Mehraj Mohammed. Shall we have Shri Jugal Kishore Bhatti on the stage to fell state, Mr. A.K. Singh? Can we have you here, sir, on the stage, please? Shri Jugal Kishore Bhatti. To felicitate uh, Mr. R. Ramana, can we have Mr. Ankush Bhandari on this stage, please? Mr. Ankush Bhandari. Please stay back as we are looking forward to have a group photo as well. Big hands, ladies and gentlemen, for Mr. R. Ramana. And please allow me to call Mr. Rakesh Prashad to felicitate or present a token of gratitude to Sri Rajesh Agarwalji. Can we have you here, sir? Because it's always the moderator who ends up giving a lot of information. 
and uh, moderator deserves a special round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for the amazing questions he presented on behalf of all of us. Thank you for being here, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. Can we have a group photo as well? Of course, with the mementos and smiley faces. Wonderful. And a big hands to all the people, all the speakers we have on this stage right now. Thank you. Thank you for your precious time. A lot of information and knowledge presented to you, presented by you, actually. Thank you so much.